Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman and with us now from New York City is Monica Crowley. She's the author of the newly released book, What the Bleep Just Happened, The Happy Warrior's Guide to the Great American Comeback. She's also a political and foreign affairs analyst for Fox News. Monica, it's nice talking with you. Hi, John. Great to be here. Thank you so much for having me. That's our pleasure. Early on in the book, uh, you write a lot about how uh, we the people are mad as hell, your words there, about a lot of things, everything from TSA pat-downs to taxpayer-backed bailouts. But for you, what was the tipping point that made you mad enough about the last three years to put pen to paper and write this book? I'll tell you, you know, I haven't written a book in about 12 years, and I kept struggling over the last decade trying to come up with the perfect subject, because as you know, when you write a book, it's a full-time commitment, so you really have to be in love with your subject and feel passionately about it. And I had never felt that way until last summer. I was out to dinner with a great girlfriend of mine, and we were going through this long list of leftist madness coming from this administration over the past three years. And the list just kept going on and on from the big things like Obamacare to the smaller things, although there's no such thing as a small thing when we're talking about Barack Obama's assault on the United States and, and on American values, but smaller things like the fact that he told the world exactly how many nuclear weapons we have. And as we were going through this list, John, I, at one point I sat back and I said to her, what the bleep just happened? What happened to America? What happened to our Constitution? What happened to jobs in this country? What happened to our traditional rocket path of economic growth? What happened to our superpower status? What happened to our ability as the United States to be respected and feared in the world? $16 trillion in debt? What the bleep just happened? And she looked at me and she said, that's your book and that's your title. So from that point on, I think, I really came to understand that that we were, we were going through a very methodical, deliberate, and systematic assault from this administration and from uh, Barack Obama's wingmen in the Congress to really take this country off a socialist cliff. And I thought it was serious enough that it deserved a full book treatment, but I also decided to make it really funny uh, because uh, my philosophy is in the age of Obama, if we don't laugh, we cry. And there's no crying in a book by Monica Crowley, and there should be no crying in America. It's time to get our groove back. Now, did you really say bleep, or was there another word uh, where the bleep went? <laughs> uh, I did use a saltier word, but my publisher advised me against actually using that word in the title because, you know, we want to have as many people read it as possible, and it's a family book. Um, but yeah, no, I, I did. And I decided to leave it to everybody's fertile imaginations to supply their own profanity of choice. All right, excellent. Well, in the second portion of the book, it's called the, the Skinniest Socialist is a Big Fat Liar. That's your title there. And I think you're pretty clear, or pretty clearly you hear you're talking about President Obama. Now, is it your position that the president intentionally misled the nation during his, his campaign? Or do you think the failures that you point out in the book are due to ineptitude, things like you just mentioned, uh, talking about how many nuclear weapons we have? And, and they, he was making promises that he, he didn't know that he couldn't keep. Well, I think that, look, when people start to say, as they are now, even people in President Obama's own party, that this man is naive or he's incompetent or he's in over his head, he doesn't know what he's doing, I reject that out of hand. This is a man who we were told in 2008 was an intellectual genius, a man with 160, 170 IQ, the most brilliant man to ever seek the office of the presidency. Now we're supposed to believe he doesn't know what he's doing, he's, uh, he's incompetent, he's a big dummy. This is a man who knows exactly what he is doing. And I lay it out in the book, I've got 300 pages and three and a half years of evidence of the systematic deconstruction of everything that has made America great. One of the things that I argue in the book is that, that it, it has been quite deliberate. So many people are afraid to say it, and that's why he's been able to get away with what he has. People are scratching their heads going, well, why won't he moderate? Why won't he be more like Bill Clinton? Why can't he tack to the center? I don't understand. He's losing his congressional majorities like he did in 2010. What's happening? The reason is, unlike Bill Clinton, who was 100% pragmatist, a total political animal, we're dealing with a completely different ball of wax in Barack Obama. This man is 100% pure ideologue, and his mission has been from the beginning to, in his words, remake America. 
fundamentally transform America, or as he, as he said repeatedly during the 2008 campaign, bring us to a more perfect union. And I write about this a lot in the book because the trick was that he allowed all of us to supply our own meanings to what he meant by that, fundamentally transforming a more perfect union. We have to look at what he meant by those phrases. And now we know. And now we also know the consequences. This man has taken the last three and a half years and very systematically gone about deconstructing the four major pillars of the U.S. economy, the industrial base, the financial sector, the energy sector, and health care. And he went about it in a very deliberate fashion in order to, quote, fundamentally transform the country. Well, con considering what you just mentioned, the, the uh, deconstruction of all those, those things, his, his perception as the commander in chief, the economy uh, now seemingly slowing down, could potentially put his second term, or is, I should say, putting his second term at risk. Why would he want to be in this position now? This is a man who doesn't care as much about his own political survival or the survival of his party as much as he cares about slamming this redistributionist agenda as fast and as efficiently as he can on the United States to the point where it would get so difficult to unwrap those tentacles. That's what he meant by fundamental transformation, even if he has to lose re-election. Don't get me wrong, of course he would love a second term and he's gonna do everything he can. The kooks are gonna pull out all the stops from the Black Panthers to voter fraud in order to get him re-elected. But should he lose, it's, it would be in his mind a very small price to pay for the achievement of this, the redistributionist agenda that he was able to get through already. All right, let, let's talk a little more about the Affordable Care Act. Your book, as you mentioned, takes dead aim at Obamacare. You also write about the American health, the, the American health care system being the best in the world still, but it's also, of course, one of, if not the most expensive, regardless of what happens with the Supreme Court ruling. What role do you think the government should play to help reduce the cost of health care for the average American? Yeah, no, great question. And this is why the Republicans, including Governor Romney, don't just talk about repealing Obamacare should the Supreme Court uh, decide to uphold it either this week or next, but they talk about repeal and replace. And the idea is that, yes, of course, the health care system needs serious reform in this country. Costs are uncontainable. They're skyrocketing. Patients are suffering. They can't get coverage and so on. What I write about in the book, and, and Republicans have been talking about this for a long time, is we need free market incentives in the health care system. So we need patient empowerment. We need the ability to buy health care insurance across state lines. That would increase competition and drive down costs. We need to reform the health code so that people are incentivized to buy their own health insurance rather than have to get it through an employer. All these patient-based and doctor-based empowering free market reforms would go a long way to actually driving the price down. What doesn't work is what they just did, which is nationalizing one-sixth of the U.S. economy. Well, another thing your book, or another issue, or a couple issues your book points out clearly are some shortcomings in President Obama's foreign policy and his immigration policy. Of course, he recently made that big announcement promising to make it easier for young immigrants to become U.S. citizens. Let me get your thoughts on the president's plan. Yeah. Well, one of the things I write about, and I've got a whole section in the book about his approach to the borders. And it touches on one of the big themes in the book, which is that Barack Obama hasn't just been redistributing our wealth. If he were as serious as that is, if he were just limited to that, we could vote him out in November, get Mitt Romney in there, vote in Republicans in the Senate and the House, and get our economy back on track. But what he has done has been so much broader and darker a scheme than just that. He is redistributing everything that makes America great. So not just our wealth, but also our economic energy, our political strength, our military power, our cultural appeal, our borders, and our very exceptionalism. And on that question of, of immigration, look at what he just did. So unilaterally, he decided to bypass Congress, uh, violate the rule of law, violate the separation of powers, and act on his own to grant essential amnesty to about 800,000 to a million illegal immigrants in this country. Note, by the way, their voting age, brought here before the age of 16, but now are 30 or below. Voting age, how convenient. What I write about here is that this strategy is all about, it's part of diluting our exceptionalism. If you flood the zone with illegal immigrants, not only do you dilute American exceptionalism, but you also get a permanent Democrat voting majority, which is also one of his big objectives. 
And how do Republicans counter this effort now? Because uh, there certainly has to be an appeal made to Latino and Hispanic voters. Uh, I know a big issue with, with those families is jobs, of course. Can the Republicans win those votes based on uh, their position on job creation? creation. I think so, but it's going to be a tough uphill battle because Obama just gave away the store uh, with this latest move. So what the Republicans have to say is, look, the other guy is trying to pander to you. He's giving away the store here. Here's what we're about. The unemployment rate are among Hispanics is astronomically high. This is why Obama moved the way he did last week, because the, the unemployment rate among Hispanics is too high. And that's why his job approval uh, rating among Hispanics was actually starting to come down. He was panicked a little bit. It was still a good job approval. He still had about 60% of the Latinos uh, support, but he realized that it was starting to really hemorrhage in significant ways and he can't win without that as a major voting block. That's why he moved. I think the Republicans need to counter that argument by saying, look, the other guy's pandering to you. Okay, he doesn't really have your interest at heart. We do, because what we want to do is create an economic environment where you will have job creation and job growth and economic prosperity in your community because all of America will have it. It's got to be a tailor made message to them, but it's also got to be a broad message about how we're going to talk about getting every American who's out of work or underemployed back to work. And that means African Americans and it means Latinos. And we should be talking about that every day, and so should Governor Romney. And and one last question for you, Monica. Given everything you write about in your book, are you surprised uh, that most pollsters still predict that this election is going to be extremely close? I'm not surprised because Barack Obama has tremendous emotional appeal. First biracial president, he certainly has most of the mainstream media on his side, which is uh, there's no small thing, right? He's got a huge powerhouse of the establishment media cheering him on, protecting him, not asking him the hard questions. So to that extent, because he has all of this, uh, in addition to the power of the White House and incumbency, I do think that uh, he's got a lot going for him here. What I am stunned by is the fact that this economy is so bad. So many Americans have been suffering for so long that the idea that it's as close as it is stuns me. I do think that in the end, though, people do vote with their wallets and their pocketbooks, and they're going to take a look around and they're going to ask the question that's the title of my book, What the Bleep Just Happened? What happened to America? This is not the America I grew up in. It's not the America that I love. We got to get our groove back. How are we going to do that? We need a wholesale change. We need a direct repudiation of Barack Obama and everything for which he stands. We need to change the Congress, get Republicans and conservatives in at every single level in order to get this country back on track. And when I talk about the happy warrior in my book, what I tried to do is create a new template for not just conservatives or Republicans, but for every American that, yeah, you know what? We're sick and tired of being sick and tired. We're sick and tired of being depressed and full of despair and thinking that our country is gone for good. We're going to say, hell no, we're going to become happy warriors and we're going to take on this mission joyfully and with a lot of pride in this country. All right. Well, the book is colorful and it's worthy of your summer reading list. It's called What the Bleep Just Happened. Monica Crowley, it's been great talking with you today. Thank you so much. My pleasure, John. Thank you.